All right, I think it's working. Today is the 7th of December, 2021. Here I am in my loft at, I call it Coho. Coho Arts and Nature Center is what this place was originally purchased to be in 1988, but here I am 33 years later, 30, almost 34 years later, and there's still no Arts and Nature Center except for me. <laughs> I'm the only uh, artist and nature lover on this little piece of land, and by, by city standards, it's a big piece of land. It's about 43 acres. Most of it's on the other side of the creek, the beautiful creek at the foot of the hill. I'm on the eastern side of the land. What I'm wanting to talk about tonight is my career as a songwriter. And it really hasn't worked out the way I kind of expected it to or hope that it would. I thought by now I would probably, you know, be making some financial income from all the thousands of songs I've written. But it just hasn't happened. And, you know, over the years, a person changes. You're not the same person you were when you were 12, when you, when you first started writing songs or when you were in your 20s or 30s or 40s or 50s or even 60s. Uh, I'm 73 and a half, <laughs> and uh, I'm still writing songs, but everything changed, everything changed. I don't really value the songs I used to value, and the ones I do value now are the ones that, that make me feel connected to Yahweh. I use the Tetragrammaton uh, Y-H-W-H, uh, which some people pronounce as Yahweh. Um, the Creator, the, the one who brought all the atoms together to <laughs> do different things and later the eaves, the Adams and the eaves, and then all the rest of us. I'm just kind of kidding around, but I believe in Yahweh, and I can't convince you of anything, and you can't convince me of anything, but my beliefs are more spiritual now than they were when I first started writing songs. And many of the songs that I wrote were sort of a self-justification for hedonism, and to some extent for materialism. I remember I, I remember very foolishly saying one time that I wanted to be more famous than Bob Dylan. <laughs> Which is, to me at this point in my life, just absolutely ridiculous, you know, wanting to be famous uh, in any capacity. Uh, to me, fame is like, it's a, a garbage heap. I don't want fame. I would like some wisdom, so in that way I share with with supposedly Solomon, uh, Solomon, the son of King David, asked for wisdom. But uh, I would like some wisdom, and sometimes I think I do have some, but it's inseparable from my faith in Yahweh, the Creator. So what I'm getting at is a lot of the earlier songs I wrote, and I was very proud of them, proud in the human sense, you know, the, the bad sense of the word pride. I was proud of these songs and because they depicted, they depicted so well the world that I saw, and they uh, described my worldview at the time that I wrote them. And they described my worldview in such a way that uh, I felt as though 
they described it well, very well, and they communicated these thoughts and feelings and uh, views that I had very well. So uh, I was proud of them for that reason. But frankly, I just don't care about them anymore. It's not that I want to, you know, bury them with a bulldozer, but uh, I want to create something new, uh, a, a different approach, so that somebody who knows nothing about me or my his personal history will be exposed to the songs that truly inspire me even today. And I'm thinking in terms of songs like uh, my musical settings for the Psalms, P-S-A-L-M-S, -S, the ancient text that's in the Bible, in the Hebrew Bible. Well, in uh, 1611, there was a publication of the uh, Bible in English, and it had been financed by the... Uh, by the the King of England, who at the time was James, King James, and he had paid these scholars to translate the Bible. And it was during the Elizabethan period of literature, so the language uh, reflects that, that period. Uh, but I've taken a lot of those, uh, those lyrics that had been translated from Hebrew into English and I've set them to music. And some of those, when I sing them, even today, they really uh, speak to my soul, if you want to call it soul. I think that's what it is. My inner, my inner being. So uh, some of them are like Psalm 27, Psalm 23, Psalm 100. Psalm 51, Psalm 30, uh, Psalm number 1, uh, Psalm uh, 61, Psalm 92, uh, and lots of others. And when I sing those, such as I do when I, when I street sing, and I found that it's best to street sing only in good weather, and it's not good weather right now. It's just bad street singing weather. So I'm not singing them in public right now, but I, today when I was on the way to the grocery store, I started singing some of those just in the car driving. It's a long way to the grocery store, a good grocery store. And so I've got a lot of time for singing. So I was singing them just today and I was thinking, you know, these songs energize me. They bring me peace. They make me feel closer to Yahweh. And so these are the songs I really want to be more apparent uh, when somebody, if they type in my name in a search engine, and I want these songs to come up. And some of these other songs, I just, I, it's not that I want to dump them, but I just want to put them back so far that it's obvious that I don't value them a whole lot. So I'm trying to find ways to do these things. And that's pretty much all that this video is about today. I just wanted to tell you that I'm in process now of trying to do this thing, make this change. And it is a sincere change. So uh, God bless you and uh, I hope all is well with you. Stay in touch.